Um, in case, hi, in case, first of all, good morning. It's my first one of the day. Um, in case you guys don't know who I am, that's okay. I'm, I don't blame you. I, my name's Karina, and I was a writer and producer on the originals. Um, we have half of our panel present. We're still searching for some boys, which was, by the way, story of my life when I was the uh, was a producer on the original, just trying to wrangle people and find them. Um, so I'm going to bring out these two, and we'll uh, we'll fill out the panel as we find the rest of them. But we have Mr. Nathaniel Bazalik <laughs> and my sister, partner in crime, Riley Vogel. Ooh, and just arriving, Mr. Chase Coleman. <laughs> Hello. I'll screw over what we That was nice. Where's our sound? I was only half the room, but it was nice. Apparently, <laughs> nobody Thank can you. find Charmin, but he was in the van with me. So Are we missing you. Daniel? Did any of you kidnap Daniel Sherman? I don't trust him. I think, I think someone did. I think he was at the kissing booth. <laughs> Wait, is he still there? Is he still there? At the kissing booth, yeah. He had a long No, booth. get out of my way. He I had know. a long You wanted to go. He had a long line. A really long line. If you guys haven't seen it, it's just outside the kissing booth with Daniel Sherman. <laughs> I'll be personal. It was actually that. quite affordable. Daniel Gillies keeps skipping the line and over and over. <laughs> Five dollars for a kiss from Daniel Sharma. That's a that's under, a, very under. Yeah. I heard if you tip, you get tongue. <laughs> Tell me what I heard. Listen, it's, we were on strike for a long time. It's been a, it's been a difficult year. Tough time. Who can blame the man for hustling? Yeah. Well, actually, yeah, we should have done that. We should have done oh, that. Oh, are we allowed to talk about shows again? Yes. <laughs> What's the bad part? Hey, you're not allowed to ask anything about the Vampire Diaries and the Originals at a at Vampire Diaries and Originals fan convention. We got some really great questions, though. <laughs> we did, actually. Yeah. yeah. Did we? Ooh, that's a bright light. Oh. Um, yeah, no, we did. Oh, sorry. It's okay. Ooh. <laughs> Slightly aggressive. That's a lie. Um, so the last time that I hosted one of these, uh, you know, a, a weekend of panels, was my first time doing it in, like, ten years, and I was a little nervous. This time I'm not nervous anymore. And um, I was thinking, we've all been through a lot together. We've been through some late nights and some very cold mornings and a lot of sticky, thick blood. And so I'm just gonna skip the small talk and get straight to the deep question oh. at 11 a.m. Bob <laughs> so, Zalek, make sure he's got the content. You gotta get the content. Doesn't happen. Look who I found. You guys is. released him. You guys released him. Wow. We just we told them, Charmin, that you were very busy at your kissing booth. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. the better looking Coles here. Great. <laughs> never, never too long at a kissing booth. Always <laughs> spend more time. <laughs> So I was just telling them that uh, I'm skipping the small talk and getting straight to the deep questions. So my first question right. for the whole panel is... What's the point? Tell me about... What's the no, point? I'm serious. What's the point? What's the meaning of life? Uh, no, actually, I want to hear one about one of your greatest... He's left. He's left. I'm going to. You're right, Daniel. Why I... are we here? What is the point? Guys, this is what life Pointless. was like on set. This whole this exercise. Point. I have an orphanage to build. <laughs> this is what life was like on set. Nobody can ever find the coals. Uh, <laughs> Quite right. Um, actually, my first question is, I want to hear about one of your greatest fears. Greatest fears? Fears. I told you, it's starting deep. Uh, um, I have a phobia okay. of the flying, stinging insects. The what? Flying, flying stinging insects. Hate them. They're Don't come to show. Australia. Um, <laughs> something happening. Or some, or somebody that I love. That's a really not fun answer, but it's true. Something happening to things I love, people I love, my cat, my biggest fear, or Taylor Swift. God forbid. Taylor Swift is your biggest fear. If something, no, happened, something bad happening to her. You I, were afraid of Taylor Swift. I'm, I mean, 
I would pee myself if she was here, but um, dollar in the Taylor Swift jar. Yeah, yeah. We we, we think decided that, we need to start. We think we need other topics of conversation because yeah. we're uh, Riley and I have a problem. Yeah. We only talk about Taylor Swift. Yeah. But we actually did at our uh, we went to two concerts in a row together, and like partway through one of them, our my friend Matt was with us, and he just goes. I would die for her. And I go, if a bus was coming, I would push her out of the way. Because she, like, the bus is, should hit me. I'll do less for the world. Like, I also am afraid of something bad happening to her. Yes, it's a true fear. What you got, Nate? Uh, my biggest fear is that I think that I have more time than I do. Ah, oh, that's a good oh, one. So good. Mm. How about you, Shana? Um, I'm scared of love. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm scared of lots of things. Um, uh, wow, well, Riley, you really brought the mood down here. Sorry, that's, that's I know, really I know. I tried to bring it back up cat, on Taylor Swift. I don't even like cats. And now I'm like, is her cat okay? <laughs> yeah, he's okay. My tongue's doing great. Um, I, I, I think like the, one of the uh, my biggest fears is is um, is of. Yeah, like similar to, to Nate, like to get to a point of your life and go, oh, I, I really thought I was going to do something with my life and get into a point where you think, oh, I was spent too much in my own narcissistic brain to really impact anything that means, and dying alone, I mean, we all die alone, but this idea of dying without having people around who are like, oh, that was, that was worth it. Well, we're not going anywhere. Oh, uh, would you be like, I'll be there. Yeah, I'll be there. I'll be fucking, and you've already... I'll be really confused if you lot are at my deathbed. I'll be like, fuck, this is brilliant. <laughs> it would just it mean that my plan worked. Yes. I'm also afraid of cat's tongues. <laughs> I hate tessellation. They're, They're very rough. No, but like duck's feet and cat's tongues are like a tessellation. It's absolutely my greatest fear. I'm, all, I'm also scared of getting into long-term contracts. Oh, I uh, thought you said relationships. No. <laughs> we know. I'm also deeply afraid of commitment. Uh, it's, yeah, that's pretty much what he's saying. Yeah. Long-term contracts. This, uh, this is how I wanted to start the morning. I really wanted to yeah. like, yeah. feel like I know you guys a little better now. And we've known each other for What's your long biggest time. fear? Yeah, what's your biggest fear? Honestly, like... Daniel Gillies. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <laughs> Um, uh, well, Karina, it's just for one day. Truly, truly, the thing that I like, the last thing I think about every night is like, we have coyotes where I live. I'm really terrified of a coyote getting my dogs. And I think about it, the last thing I think about at night when I let them out, and the first thing I think about in the morning when I let them out is I'm just like scanning for coyotes. So yeah. I'm very scared of them. <sighs> and also that like my parents aren't proud of me. Oh. oh. They are so, how could wow. they not be? This is that's not what he says to me. terrible. And you've I impacted think... the world, Charmin. You already have. Uh, I can't uh, with all of this. It's terrible. It's sad. I like it. Okay, now let's, now, now like let's it ask him the depressing stuff. question. Okay. Shall um, we? Which coal do you think has the bigger muscle? <laughs> <laughs> well, can you show your work? <laughs> can you show your work? Um, Ashley, next question. So, I was thinking about when we first meet Freya, and in case you guys don't remember, because it's like a, a very, uh, it was sort of right in her, in her introduction, Freya's whole thing was that, like, she was cursed to sleep for a hundred years and then wake up and live her life. Was and then, it only a hundred? I always say it was a like, thousand. She sleeps a hundred and then gets to wake up for oh, a little that's while right. and then that's sleeps a right. hundred again. So Freya has gotten to live in many different eras. Personally, I don't think it sounds like that bad of a curse. Like, I like history, I want to experience the world, and also, like, I love maps. Yes. So maybe it was a privilege, not a curse. I think it was. Um, but yeah, so my next question for you guys is, if you could live in any era of history that you didn't get to experience, what would you have liked to experience? The 70s. Faux show, the 70s. The music. Well, you were close. Huh? You were close. Like, it's not like, you know, 500 years. You're like, literally about 20 years. I was close, yeah. I was just by a little bit. I know. I was born in the wrong time. I think I would have just loved the vibes. 
then. I love the music, the like style, in your 20s, the like little, 70s. you know, hippies. Yeah. 70s. Would have been great. What about you guys? You know, I like to feel that I'm pretty tough, like I'm a badass. But if, I, know. if, if I think you about are. me now, having to live before the year 1980, 1970, <laughs> Life was tough. I don't know, because I was thinking that too. I was like, shit, where would I want to go? But like, before 1900, life was hard. Like, you didn't even survive half the time. People were dying left and right. So I don't know, I, I would, maybe the 80s, because I love the 80s. I'm too afraid to go too early. You would have been this. great in the 80s. Like, hair metal band. Love the 80s. I can see it. You would have fit right in, Christmas. Yeah. I, I would have been happy anything pre social media, you know? Like, wow. I mean, I grew up in a generation that didn't have smartphones and uh, social media. And it was, I, I remember when, you know, when you liked a girl in high school, you had to get their their, te their home telephone number. And you would have dad to, would pick up. Dad would pick up. Uh, Wait, you didn't write the note and slide it in their locker and then never talk to them? No, I went to an all-boys school, so. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, that would be a different experience. Um, but yeah, I just, I think, you know, Pre-social media, I feel sorry for this generation because you know the interactions like, oh, what's your snap, you know, um, and so that. Snapchat's still a thing. Oh. Is it? This is what I mean, Brian. You're so behind. Are we old? Yes. 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 Also, two thousand years ago in Jerusalem would have been fun for me. Obviously, I'm a Christian. I would have been like, yeah. I told you he was the Messiah. Yeah. I feel like Charmin should have been around for Shakespeare. Oh my god, yeah. It'd be hard to be around pre-painkillers. I agree with the change. <laughs> <laughs> painkillers are a real help in life. Painkilling um, I, I could, I could, uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I would love to have been around 1500s, 1490s in England, but like Chase says, you're, you're dealing with like chucking sewage out of windows, um, you know, like your life expectancy, but it's, it's very low, you're, you're dealing with like very structural change. I, I think I could vibe with that. It's a lot like my, li like my life now in LA, I feel. <laughs> to get to very the other similar. country, you gotta take it both. Yeah, yeah you were talking about people throwing like, you know, yeah, shit out, out the window. window. Yeah. I was like, you, you uh, Echo Park you? is exactly like that. <laughs> You gotta, you gotta go for months on a boat to get anywhere out of your country, right? Yeah. So no planes. Yeah. I'd like to experience it. Though. What about you, Greg? Can I just say, right, Karina, we were on the plane together, and she re-watched a lot of the things just so that she could do this. So she's like, very, wow. I just think that's... <coughs> Honestly, I'm just like really narcissistic, and I'm just like, man, that was a good line. Yeah, do you know what she Who said? Wrote that? She said to me, I did a really good job. <laughs> That's what I realized. I think I, to, your episodes were the best. To put that into some context, sometimes we like, you know, sometimes you like get down on your previous work and you feel like you're improving, and it was nice to like have some space from it and actually go back and watch because like we all did a very good job. I was proud of all of us. I think I think I would I would put put those original episodes on any of your reels and be proud of them. Um, uh, if I, I, once again, and this mind meld happens to us a lot, but I also would go 70s for the music. I would have been like just running around at music festivals and I, like. I also would have liked being an adult in the 90s for the music. I was, yeah. I mean, I grew up with it, but I was so young that. Yeah, we were too um, little to go yeah, to like, to like go to the concerts. Yes. Like, yeah. For sure. Yeah. Riley and I will go time traveling together someday. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Um, Nate, you died and returned so many times. Yes, many times I on, died. Across the, the various shows. Do you know yes. how many times? Like four, five, I lost count. <laughs> but we, uh, we opened the show talking about fear, and I figured talking about death isn't very festive. And look at how pretty, you guys, they did such a good job putting us all in the holiday spirit yeah. here. So I figured I'd turn the tables and ask you guys, what in life that doesn't have anything to do with work makes you feel most alive? When do you feel most like yourself? <laughs> Love. I told you guys, I'm, not, I'm asking the deep stuff. 
You, somebody else can ask them what their favorite color is. Um, I feel most alive, I know I keep saying this so far in the panel, but with that music, just music, whether it's live music of any sort, dancing with the people I love, glass of wine maybe, a charcuterie board somewhere in the near distance. Um, and yeah, living in those moments where you kind of forget what day it is, what year it is, what time it is, and you're just alive, dancing. That's, that's my fate. I feel most alive when I'm in love. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I love love. And so, yeah, you love thank love. you, thank you. I don't know why I'm giving this clap, but thank you. Thank you. But, you know, like, if I'm not in a relationship, if I'm not in love, I don't listen to love songs, I don't like love songs, they annoy me. It just hurts too much. No, not even, I just make, I feel nothing. So I'm just like, oh, next. But when I'm in love, I could listen to the same song. Over, I could sit on an airplane and look out the window and watch the clouds and just think for, for hours about the person that I, that I like. So for me, I think I come alive. And I love spoiling a person, I love getting to know a person, I love pouring all my energy into that person and, you know, I forget about me and I kind of make it all about them. So I feel more alive when I do that. Good answer. All the lovers out there. How much though? How much? I feel most alive when I'm with my little chihuahua Menpen mix and my girl Taylor and we're hanging out. Just being not alive. Swift. His uh, girlfriend's name is Taylor. He's not. He, it's not the same. Swift. No. Oh, you're not dating Taylor Swift? Oh, move over. Anymore. Yes. Charmin. I feel like Charmin thinks if, you're, if he's quiet, I might skip him. Uh, well, the thing about psychedelics is that <laughs> often in the process of psychedelics. There's a moment where you realize that, like, you're most alive, like, right now. And if I can be in the present moment as, as much as, even in, like, really painful situations, like, I'm fighting that battle all the time to be, like, here, right now. And, like, that, when I get those moments, it's fucking incredible. But it's only through the blends of not being in my own brain that I can do that. And if I'm in my body in that, that way, like, then that's my eternal fight. And it happens very briefly and it happens sometimes. But it, it is like my etern that eternal thing of being like, we've got nowhere to go, guys. We're like, we're gonna, you're going to leave these seats and this thing. And it's going to be like, oh, there was that thing that we had to go. Now we have to go do this other thing. There is nothing, there is nothing. And I have to continually remind myself that I'm alive. Like, as, I'm as alive as I'll ever be right now, and it will never be any more alive. Mm. That was really profound. Yeah, that was really Thank you very much, guys. Thank you, thank you. And um, my book is coming out next week. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, one it's a one-page book. Exactly. You are alive. Exactly. The end. But and then try to make money off of it. Yeah. If you've read this page, you are alive. Yeah. By the, give me <laughs> <laughs> yep. By the end of this weekend, I'm just going to have, like, you guys are going to know everything about everyone's inner demons. <laughs> well, we don't have time for that. Uh, <laughs> On this stage, there's a, more demons than in the entire show put together. Somebody bring a couch up here so Daniel can lay down and I can ask him some questions. So, my childhood. <laughs> uh, <laughs> traumatic. Start with your father. <laughs> um, Charmin, you uh, joined the originals playing a character that was originated by Nate over here. Uh, and your your arrival was thanks to a series of sort of body swap shenanigans. Yes. So my final question before we hand the, the questioning over to our lovely audience is, if you guys could swap bodies with one person for 24 hours, and you're in their life, who would it be? And what would you do? Well, I'm Mr. Uh, Riley, of course I would go straight into Riley's oh body. Oh my god! I'd just be like, Ooh, what does this feel switch. like to be a woman? It feels pretty well, good. Well, I mean, I'm gonna truck like, you. Know. Just go to Taylor Swift. I, I wanna be Taylor Swift. Oh, I wanna yeah, know that's what that's like. That would be great, actually. Yeah. Either me or Taylor Being Swift. Being queen of the world? 
Either one? Riley or Taylor Swift? Yeah. Yeah. No, I could only wish. But that would, I would want, yeah, it would, I mean, Taylor Swift's a good one, but that probably more like Stevie, like more like an actual like rock star, like a dude rock star. Like Stevie Tyler? Or like, I want to I wanna know that like for 24 hours. What Just to walk do, around like? with sunglasses and like. Know. You could like try all the drugs because their bodies already yeah. sucked. Yeah, so, and like, like survive them all. Just no like, fear. Yeah, yeah, no consequences. No now fear. you know what it feels like. Yeah. How's the Yeah, or Daniel Sharman. Those ones. Yeah. Hey, hey, yeah. not all the drugs, okay, guys? Nate's <laughs> thinking. I'm really thinking you about your, it. You got your thinking. I've thought, you know. Deepest question Yeah. Like, you know, Bezos, you know? Just, just, just become Bezos for a day. I, I would I would probably choose somebody very wealthy and just wire myself some some money real fast. Oh, that's I, well, smart. I, well, just a little. I was prepared to pay Bezos his money. I thought about go, going into like my girlfriend's body, but then I'm scared of what I'll see. I'm like, wow, I'm really annoying. <laughs> like really annoying. Do really you want to wanna have sex with yourself? Is that what you're saying? That's what I was. That's what I thought he was going. Oh. Dude, I, I just want to know if I'm You have to try it. Huh? You have to try it to see how you are. You can make adjustments, you know? I you agree. Like, oh, oh, she was thinking it all yes. along. Yes, right. Riley was thinking this. I was not thinking. I just wanted to see if I'm joking. I don't really know if I've ever seen you blush before, and you are blushing a little bit right now. I'm blushing. I didn't know it was possible Christian. to embarrass this man. <laughs> um, I just want to see if my jokes are funny, you know? Because I think I'm a pretty funny guy. And, you know, funny. What do you mean? You are funny. You're like trying to convince me like I don't know. <laughs> you are funny. Yeah. Believe in yourself. I do. Thank you too much. <laughs> okay. All right. Anyway. Yeah. Well done, guys. Thank you for indulging my magic you, question Karina. thing. Thank you, Karina. Uh, if you guys have questions, I don't actually know where you're supposed to line up, but over there. There are microphones on each side. So if you guys want to actually, you want them to get up to come to you? Yeah, it's easier if you guys kind of go line up if you've got, got some questions. And when you grab the microphone, you can come and stand down here and look these lovely people straight in the eye. Where, where, where is the... Is it there? Right, right behind the bright, shining light. Yeah. I feel like I'm being interrogated. Where were you in the night of the 15th? Uh, I'm also slightly worried that my shirt is see-through. Oh, it's, it's okay. completely With the bright light. I can let you know if you want me to give a good look. You want to give you a good look and let me know? No, but uh, there was a convention, where was it? It was somewhere in Europe that we did, and I wore a shirt that was like kind of um, meshy. Gauzy. Yeah. And, and the flash. Oh my god, I had no idea, and all the photos that came out, it was just, just my. Um, yeah. It was I did have a bra on, thank goodness. But I can it go was, see if I can find out photos on that. Yeah. I had no idea. I think you got a lot of guy photos that day, more than yeah. usual. <laughs> Yeah, that's why I took 10 photos with you that day. <laughs> okay, does somebody else have the microphone help? <laughs> All right. Come on, come on. We'll just wait. We'll just wait here. Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to wait. You want to? Uh, Hi. My question is what perfumes and colognes do you all wear? So Ooh, that's again. a great question. What perfume and cologne do you wear? We just asked Gillies what he was wearing, and he just goes, it's fear. <laughs> it's fear. That's a true story. This just happened. Um, I love perfume, and I love cologne, and I usually mix a couple. Um, wow. Yeah. My, okay. One of my go-tos is Burberry Brit. Um, it's one of my favorites, and then I also really love, although it's, it's a tad masculine, um, and it's stupid expensive, so I only have like a small bottle of it, but, but it's called Fucking Fabulous by Tom Ford, and I love that one, and there's, there's several others, but those are my two faves. Yeah. What's that brand called, the New York one, La Bobe, or something like La that? La Labo. La Labo? I got um, Sentinel 33. It's very expensive too. That's what I'm wearing. Oh really? Yeah. Did you think it just fades so quick though? Mm -hmm. We pay top dollar and it just disappears. Yeah. Apparently yeah. he doesn't think I smell good. <laughs> smell mine. See if you can smell mine. Yeah, I can smell a little. Okay. It's, clo it's close to the skin. I really yeah. have to get in there. I, yeah. I also don't want to dock, uh, I know this is like whatever, but Victoria's Secret, 
um, some of their stuff, one called Bear, it's called Bear, it's really, really good. And that's, you can mix with your expensive one. Bear. And it lasts, Bear, like Bear Skin. Can it's I really ask you, good. is smell a big part of your, like, love language? Would you like to smell any of these people? <laughs> Wait a second, wait, wait, wait. Let's make this more official. We want you to smell all of us and tell us who, who smells the best. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. I'm wait. Wait. Could you smell us blind and see which one is which? Let's do it. Okay, okay, we'll try it. So she'll come up here and then. Somebody get her blindfolded and we'll, uh, we'll answer some more questions. Let's trust her and she'll close her eyes. And Just a normal okay. Friday afternoon in Conyers. Come on up. Smell test. Smell test. Guys, if you guys go around back there. Go around right back. I just want everyone to know, the, the, the people who are putting on this show, this is his fault. I'm following the rules. Yeah. This is all. <laughs> let's, let's also hope she hasn't got long COVID and she has no sense of smell. <laughs> right. Because that'd be really awkward. I don't smell anything. I'll break. Okay. 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 She'll, she'll, she'll stand. Huh? Peaches. Beautiful name. Everyone. Lovely name. What's her name? So stand in the Petra. middle. Beautiful. Stand in the middle and we'll all approach you one by one. Okay. okay. Silently, guys. No, Chase, put your pants back on, okay? <laughs> okay, wait. So the first person's gonna walk show. up to you right now. She's got COVID, guys. <laughs> okay. Okay, next person, next person. Well, should we ask who, she, who, no. who that was? So no, she, she's okay. gonna, that was number one. Now we got number two. Okay. We're all sitting down. We, we need a number. Who smelled the best? Take your time. This is important. I think I know when you walked by me. Which, which number? This one was that you. Did you do the first one? Yes. Yeah. 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 I felt really good. Would you like it? Would you the second one? Uh, yeah. I don't remember the second one. Who was the second one? It was me. Did you love the second one? Is that what you're talking about? It was me. I don't remember which one it was. I remember the first one. You loved the second one and thought it was me. Well, put, this way. Really put it this way. I remember what you did on the second one. You went, hmm. Okay, yeah. Mm. She did. She did actually she did. have a little bit of a reaction to the second Thank you so much. Thank I hope you. that, I hope that uh, you. your love language feels indulged. Look, guys. I think the moral of the story is that she really likes the way I smell. Yeah. Okay. Take that away. All right. Uh, who's next? We're not going to show and tell for every single person. I'm so sorry. Let's find out who's the best person now. But that was fun. Close your eyes. Daniel Shaman. That's okay. So uh, my question is for Riley. Okay, we'll leave. Wait, where is... Oh, hi. Hi, Angel. Okay, okay. Just pull right there. Um, so Riley, of course I have to ask you this. What era would Freya be a Taylor Swift? What would be her era? Ooh, uh, reputation. Thank you. Hi, um, my question is for all of you. I was just wondering if you could possess one trait of a vampire, which one would it be and why? I would compel people. Hands down. Is this vampires? From just this show? Probably the, uh, it's a hard one. Part of me wants to be immortal so I can do everything, experience everything, but then part but then of me Then you lose also, everyone. Right, you lose yeah. everyone and then what's the point? Um, so maybe not that, maybe vamping. Vamping is what we call the, the, the quick Moving speed quickly. across the, yeah. 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 We'd be like, okay, freeze, and then move the camera, vamp. They'd, one person would run. Yeah. 
I thought vamping was just like when you do something a bit crazy and like... Yeah, and, but like on set when they were vamping. He doesn't know. He was a witch. <laughs> he was just making up chants after I spent hours writing them. He was so good at it. You're the reason I, I thought I could make up chants, and then I said El Pacino when I tried. <laughs> Because I'm like, Charmin does it so well. I well, Karina that. would like these long chant, and I'm uh, not learning those. I got <laughs> Not learning it. I'll make it up on the day. I'll see how I feel. We actually I'm a fucking witch. <laughs> but the, the problem was when like, he and Daniel Campbell had to chant in unison, and she would memorize them. I would just go, like, Daniel, follow my fucking lips. I do it with AI, it'll fix it in post. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll let, yeah. I would probably get the power of moodiness, you know? Just you, brooding. Just brooding, just moody. Like, you know. Like Stefan. Like Stefan, just. Yeah. I'm not happy about my situation. I liked her first. <laughs> I think I already have that power. Though. You absolutely do. <laughs> You absolutely do. Oh. You know what we should do, Jarvis? We should go on the road and do a comedy show. Yeah? Yeah. We should do a movie show. No, it's still I'll like, go only if uh, Daniel Gillies is a part of that. I'm yeah, grumpy yeah. today. Uh, I'm not taking photos because I'm in a bad mood. Uh, <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> you didn't Sorry, chase? Uh, did you say power of compulsion? Is that what you said? Yeah. Yeah, that or I want to fly. I know they don't fly. But they should be fine. I want to fucking fly. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like the ones on our show could probably like jump really far if they yeah. wanted to. <laughs> yeah, I would do. I would do power of compulsion, not in any like creepy, weird way, but just like to get things done faster. Yeah. Um, I also, well, I feel like the witches had cool things too, and uh, I said this at the last convention. But do you guys ever, you know, when you're at the airport? and you're going through those like doors that are really close together and they open automatically, do you ever just kind of like pick your hand up each time? Like, you as use the force? That? Is that just you me? Use the force? Like a Jedi. Jedi. We all have. I, I like to pretend, so I would like to have that power as well. Just yeah, Jedi, Jedi, Jedi. Break an egg, open a door. Not vampire power. What have you. Thank you for the question. Oh, no. by the way, before, sorry, before you start, um, I Realize I don't have my phone on me, so you guys need to wave me down when it's time to yeah, wrap it up. Fine. I can't see because of the light, so okay. I I can't see that. How long have we got? I'm thirty. I'm thirty-six years old. My eyes are not what they used. Five this minutes. light is so Five bright. Five minutes. Five minutes. Five more minutes. Okay, that's what I needed to know. All good. Thank, Thank you for writing that on a piece of paper and coming up with it. That's really sweet. Five minutes. Thank you. I'm sorry. Five could minutes, you, please. Could you give us a two-minute warning as well? Thank yeah. you. I'd like the, to the lights are really bright. On a different piece of car. That would be great. Um, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> All right, so I'll be really quick. But what I wanted to do is loop back to fear and thank you guys for what you have done with your time so far. Because as someone who should be cancer-free in two months, um, it was a great distraction for me and something fun to think about other than what was around me. So looking back at your career, what was the scene you looked at and you walked away and you're like, wow, I was really proud of that acting today. Congratulations <laughs> in advance. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll say that was. And thank you for saying that. Um, it's a little hard because I feel like as actors, we're very critical. Um, and like sometimes it's hard to watch ourselves, um, but you guys uh, kind of shatter that sometimes, and it means so much when you hear that it meant something to you because it kind of takes us out of that. I will say I remember a scene, um, and Charles Michael Davis was directing that episode, and it was the first time that Keelan and Freya kissed, and that whole scene up until that, I just um, in the rain. In the rain, I just really felt it, and um, it felt really real and special. Um, yeah. What about you? I just love beating up Damon. I wish there was more scenes like that. <laughs> give me a bat, give me a stick, choke him out, anything. I just, it always felt so real to me when I was choking him. Uh, I remember one time, you know, he was like, hey, I'll sell it. No, you won't, I'll sell it. <laughs> I'm going to be one who's selling it. You're the one who's going to be struggling to breathe. <laughs> Do you guys have one? I feel like Charmin is definitely too critical of himself to ever be proud of anything. No, I don't think I've ever been proud of anything. <laughs> I, don't, but I, don't, I don't think that's a bad... I mean, I, I, I very rarely look back and go, smashed it. 
the work. I, like, I'm 100% you know, with you. That's exactly how I feel. Yeah. I mean, that's how I feel in my life. So it's it's um. There, there are things, there are things that like, well, I, I, that's a very hard question, right? Like we, we all, we have so little control over the day, over the thing, and so a lot of it is, is like you, you turn up and you do this, and you're absolutely unsure of how that comes across, or, and it's out of your hands. You're not really, you're not really kind of like aware of what will happen after it's done. So. Um, yeah, I, I don't. I, when you said that, I was like, "Fuck, I don't know. If, I don't know if I've ever come away going, yeah, I smashed it." As the person who does know what happens after that, the episode of TV I think that I'm the most proud of as a whole episode as a writer is episode 214 of the originals, which is the episode where your version of Cole died, and we shot that. He was like, he was like uh, deteriorating, and. We shot it after a Christmas break. We had like prepped the episode before the break and then gone away and come back. And you had spent the whole break like working on these scenes and figuring out what that would feel like. And you put yourself into a very dark place. I was very, as your friend, I was concerned. Um, but as you know, your collaborator and as a writer, I was so blown away by your work on that episode. And I know it goes off and it gets edited and. The first cut that we got of that episode was like 80 minutes long, and we had to cut 40, 38 minutes out of it, and it killed me. And but it was really beautiful work. And you've only grown since then. So yeah. Well, Karina, I remember. I remember when I was in that dark hole. Karina went, maybe take it less seriously. <laughs> and it, she's, it is a CW show. She's like, well, she's right. Like this is also we have to recognize that we are making entertainment, right? And like that. We're making things that are meant to be like joyful. Um, I, I think I just have a little punch on for just going. Ugh. So, but thank you for the He's question. A very Congratulations, serious actor, and thank you for what you said about yeah. the show getting you through difficult times. That means a lot to us. Well, thank you for being our Taylor. Oh, oh. that's the best thing anyone's ever that's, said to yeah, me. Like, and my Taylor Swift convention, do they have them? I would, I would be, I would be front and center. Concert, so. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't mean, I've done the concerts. I Is Taylor Swift on your Spotify like, wrapped? Yeah, number one. Number one? Yeah. Number one? I, I don't have Spotify. She doesn't have Spotify. Oh. My husband so does, nasty. I know, and he keeps saying, like, I need to make the switch, but because for so many years I've been Apple Music, I, it seems like a daunting task. To yeah, like, Apple, but Spotify, is, I know is better, and he's been trying to get me to wear it for years. I just Spotify, sponsor Riley. <laughs> yes, please don't transfer um, all my music over. Do you do have to, right? You have to like transfer it all. No. Yeah. Well, I know, but I have to. You're all your favorites and your algorithm and all that. Um, okay, sorry. We, we've got to be quick. I'm One more do, question. I'm gonna do two more questions, and then we get in trouble. But. I'm Brian, uh, traveling out of New Mexico. Hi, Brian. Uh, thank you all for being here. Uh, my question is, now that you can talk about it, um, what, what project do you have coming up, this is for the whole panel, uh, that you might be excited to share, uh, and or if, if there's something maybe further out that you want to do, if you would like to talk about that. I got three projects that I'm working on. I'm working on a film right now. I have this massive beard that I cannot shave. It's a film called Side Slip. It's a very Chris Nolan style film. It's compared to like everything everywhere all at once meets Jumper, Hayden Christensen movie. Cool. It's a guy who thinks he's absolutely out of his mind crazy, schizophrenic, but, and because he's going through life and things keep changing around him. But what's actually happening is he is slipping through different dimensions. And what he's seeing is, is the world's changing around him because he's doing that. And eventually he discovers that because a guy finds him and teaches him this is what you're doing. Spoiler alert. And then it becomes a whole like, that's not a spoiler alert, trust me. That's literally going to be written in the plot of the film. But yeah, that and then a couple other things later. Uh, I'm working on an action movie later next year called Fallen Star, which is going to be a lot of fun. And then working on a funny Napoleon Dynamite style film called Nicky Newark in New Jersey next year as well. And then almost done with my next single, my song that I'm working on, Runaway. So that should be out there. Killing it. Killing it. Brian, I'm going to make this very easy for you. I'm not doing anything. And I uh, have no upcoming projects. He will. 
you're like the king of working, Sean. Uh, you will forever. It's Brian. If you've got a job or anything that you want to give me, I'm available. Okay. <laughs> I do have uh, the third season of my show, High Town, will be airing. I can't tell you when yet, um, but it will be coming out. Um, I, I really love the show, and I hope you guys do. Uh, warning for those of you who haven't seen it, it's very different than the originals. Um, instead of a witch, I am a stripper. So just <laughs> full, full disclosure. Um, it really contains multitudes. Yeah, it's a... It's a lot. Um, there's actually a video of an Originals fan on the internet, um, which is just so funny and so cute. She, uh, her sister was recording her watching Hightown, and she's like crying and screaming at the at the TV, like Freya, no, Freya, no. So I feel like I have to warn people. It's very different. I'm very proud of it. It was an amazing, amazing experience, and it's a great show. So I hope you like it. But I just want to give you the fair warning. Um, very different. Than the originals. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> well, uh, I've uh, launched a media company. Uh, I've been in Israel for the last month reporting on the war. <laughs> yeah. So I've uh, I've launched a media company which has been really really busy and we've uh, had a lot of uh, fundraising going on. So I think I'm doing that. We got the rights to uh, a woman's story who was in one of the uh, communities near Gaza and uh, she had four terrorists from Hamas come into her house and she fed them for 18 hours, um, feeding them for that long until the IDF came and actually uh, saved her from them. And so this old woman just kept feeding these terrorists food for 18 hours and that she kept making them food so they kept eating and she made them cake and cookies and all these things and then eventually the, uh, the IDF soldiers came and, uh, and rescued her. So we have her story, which we're going to do a documentary on, uh, which is incredible. Um, and I started uh, a trivia quiz app, uh, which I launched two weeks ago. Yeah, because I love trivia. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's a fun thing. It's uh, app.quiz.com with three eyes. Um, it's a trivia on um, Meet the Just trivia. trivia. There's yeah. lots of trivia. You can do Taylor Swift that's trivia if you want, it. Friends. Um, so I've been working on that, and I think I got offered a movie about an hour and a half ago. Um, yeah, so I've got a movie that I'm going to hopefully do next year. And yes. I also have a girlfriend now. I don't know if I'm, I'm sorry, that in there, yeah. Uh, what else? Uh, Brian, um, gosh, probably just going to hang out for a bit after this and, you know, chill and make some dinner. I do love making pasta. Okay. And for a while. Yeah. Uh... Actually, I'm gonna go. I have a show that I think you guys really love that I'm doing with uh, this lady named Julie Pleck, if you've ever heard of her. Um, <laughs> on, it's gonna be on Amazon Prime. It's called We Were Liars, and it's based on a book that's also really cool. You should read it. I'm so excited for that. One final question. It's gonna be great. Hello, my name is Alizé, and my question is, what's your favorite memory on set, like behind the scenes? First day. Handed loved it. off. Loved it. First day. It was awesome. Loved meeting everybody. It was like a dream. What about you, Nate? I would say the last scene that we did on the originals where we were all together, Daniel, Joseph, uh, Riley. Dinner party. Yeah, we were saying goodbye and we were, all, we were all crying about our last day and we were all crying because the scene was coming to an end. They were real tears. Well, that. Well, no one cared. Okay. <laughs> what am I? <laughs> I've never seen anything fall so flat. They were real tears. Real tears. Yeah, a bit late. Okay, work on that for tomorrow. That scene, though, um, was one of my favorites as well. The, when we're all having dinner, you mean? Around the dinner table? No, when or? we're around the fireplace. And oh. You forgot about it already. Yeah. Okay, um, I guess it wasn't I, real for you. I, I'm thinking about the, the last dinner we all had together where they didn't script. Oh, they didn't write the scene, they just said, just talk and reminisce and be yourselves and we're just going to record and get footage of you guys, you know, around this dinner table. And so we did, and it was really special um, and then sad. And I didn't think I was going to cry until I was like, okay, we're all going to say our thank yous and our speeches and all of that. And then Charles Michael Davis did his, and like he did that whole, like, you know, where he's talking and then it's like... <laughs> And like holding back, like how like you know a guy does like the tears. And he's, not, he's not like a crier. No, like we have some boys that we work with that are criers. He's not. 
we, we, he did that, I just lost it. I just started, I think like, I was like, thank you as I'm crying by and like ran away. It was like so sad. It was, um, but it was special. Yeah, uh, but, I mean, favorite day, it's usually when there's loads of actors, because it's always such a fun thing to play with loads of people, so, and like making Danielle, like, winding Danielle up is one of my favorite things ever. It was, um, yeah, it is fun, isn't it? It is fun, yeah, yeah, like, it's a sport. It should be, like, everyone should enjoy it, and do it when you see her or meet her. Um, but yeah, like, well, usually it's like working with lots of people is always, like, really fun, and like, the more bonkers it is, the, the, the better. Nate and Sharman are extremely, extremely different people, like, as themselves. The one thing that the, both of the men who play Cole have in common is they just fucking love teasing Danielle Campbell. Yes. Just getting her all a tizzy, she forgets her lines all of a sudden, she doesn't know what she's doing, they're like, working her up, the call action, she's like, where am I, what's happening? What? Yeah. I don't know how she Thank kissed, you guys. She I, gotta, you. I so have to shut these guys up or I'm not doing my job. You have to do a kissing Danielle. You have to get long. really... Let's put her in a box. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.